Because of what has happened in Munich during the past 48 hours, I have found it impossible to think about anything else. All of us are constantly bombarded by the horrors of death and brutality with which man infects his world. And in order to maintain a sense of sanity and purpose, we go about our business looking at that side of us which is optimistic and cheerful. But the horror and senselessness of Munich is so real there is no escape into optimism because when you think about it, the whole world is Munich. Violent death of man at the hands of another man has become so acceptable and commonplace it may one day be listed as death by natural causes. And you think about the irony of how the Olympic Games, a celebration of life, are called off even temporarily by the death of those athletes, and yet a half a world away, 900,000 can die in Vietnam, and no one calls off the war. There's something else, though, about Munich that bothers me more. On the news, when you see a Vietnamese mother and her child die, it hurts. But you know there has been somebody, some country, on her side. When you see an American soldier die in Vietnam, it hurts. But you know there has been someone on his side. However, when a Jew dies in Munich or in Auschwitz, it seems he dies alone. And when he fights, he fights alone. These killings took place not too many days before Yom Kippur, the holiest of all Jewish holidays, the Day of Atonement, the day Jews ask forgiveness for their sins. Why is it in a world where a Jew has been historically more sinned against than sinner, would he ask forgiveness for his transgressions? Why, when his fellow man is being cruel to him, would the Jew talk about his fellow man's kindness? Why? Because a Jew is special. A Jew is different. A difference that all too often was used by others as an excuse to suppress him. And in spite of that suppression, the Jew became the yeast in the bread of civilization that caused it to rise. Because they were so frequently near death themselves, they recognized, as Dr. Albert Schweitzer said, a reverence for life. They became the healers, the philosophers, the scientists, the humanitarians. And even if he only became an unknown tailor in some small haberdashery, he invested it with dignity and most importantly, he invested it with hope. For the Jew knows that without that hope, there can be no survival. And if there's one thing the Jew has learned, it is the bitter art of survival. On his own, the Jew managed to maintain and strengthen his difference in his individuality. In this respect, regardless of our national origin or religious affiliation, we are all struggling on our own to survive. We are all struggling to maintain our own difference in individuality. And we are all struggling to maintain hope. In that respect, we are all spiritually Jews. And as he has shown us, we are all special. What has happened in Munich must have brought home to Jews of every nationality, even to those who perhaps didn't think too much about it, their own sense of Jewishness. To the rest of the world, this horror should stir in them some reflections about their own Day of Atonement. Because in the long run, if a Jew is not safe in Munich, or Tel Aviv, or Moscow, or anywhere, then none of us is safe, or perhaps deserves to be.